yeah, actually, it might. Nutmeg is a spice that is native to the Banda Islands in Indonesia. It's actually the seed of the fruit of the, let me read it, Maristica fragrance tree. I'll put the name here for the nerds. Europeans discovered it and caused conflict in order to take over the islands and conquer the islands so they could have nutmeg all to themselves. The Dutch East India Company invaded to establish a monopoly on the nutmeg trade. And at first, they got their asses handed to them, but after a Dutch retaliation, they somehow managed to get a peace treaty signed. And this peace agreement gave them the monopoly on the nutmeg trade. The Bandanese resented this violently imposed treaty, and conflict raged from 1609 to 1621. A conflict that ended with the Dutch taking control of the islands, and most, if not all, Bandanese natives were murdered, and or enslaved and forced to teach other enslaved people from other nations that had been imported in. They were to teach other enslaved people how to farm nutmeg. Now there is so much more that happened here, but if I were to tell you it, I would just be reciting a Wikipedia page. I will put links down in the description below for if you want to know more about the conflict of the Bantanese Islands and nutmeg. And I'm not really a historian, I am a scientist, although I am very interested in this history. Nutmeg has many culinary uses, for example in pumpkin pie. Lots of autumn and winter kind of staple recipes use nutmeg. You can also find it in eggnog, it has its uses in rice pudding, but it also has uses in savoury cooking and you can find it in some blends of garam masala. And the Dutch, weirdly, put it in Brussels sprouts. And even outside of the kitchen, nutmeg has been used medicinally since at least the 19th century. In the late 19th century, it was taken by many in large quantities in the hopes of terminating unwanted pregnancies. However, it was not effective and this practice declined. Today, some use it to remedy arthritis, flatulence, and other GI complaints. But there's no official recommendation from the FDA or any other food and drug body. It is also used to get high, and this is because of two compounds called myristicin and alemicin. Those names will also be here. Myristicin gets metabolized into an amphetamine compound known as MMDA. The precise pharmacology of MMDA isn't yet known, but based on its structural relationship with other compounds, it's thought to be both a 5-HD2A agonist and a serotonin releaser by reversing the serotonin transporter. 5-HD2A agonism is responsible for the classic uh, symptoms, classic psychedelic effect of LSD, as well as psilocin and mescaline. For the pharmacologists out there, G-alpha Q and beta Y subunits dissociate from each other with G-alpha Q stimulating phospholipase C and activating IP3 and diacylglycerol which then activates protein lipase C, protein kinase C. Oops. There is also a calcium release which increases dopamine transmission in the prefrontal cortex. And it's this activity that mediates hallucinogenic activity. It does other stuff, but this is what we think nutmeg does to get you high. Reversing the serotonin reuptake transporter puts more serotonin in the cleft, which results in more neuronal firing. And it generally causes more serotonin to be just floating around in the brain, which causes more positive symptoms, like euphoria and warmth, and negative symptoms, notably anxiety. It can also cause GI disturbances like nausea and vomiting. Myristicin is also noted to be a weak MAO inhibitor, which makes your neurotransmitters last longer. A common class of antidepressants are MAO inhibitors, so abusing nutmeg alongside can lead to an overdose or an enhanced effect. This is very rarely a good thing. Now, alemicin metabolizes into another amphetamine compound known as TMA. This stands for trimethoxyamphetamine. There is very little online about it, but it is a known psychedelic hallucinogen and it very likely has similar pharmacology to other amphetamine derivatives like myristicin. There are other compounds in nutmeg that have properties that could make for a good drug of abuse, but they are only barely present in the nutmeg seed. 
you would reach toxic levels of meristocin and alanacin before you ever got to psychoactive amounts of these drugs. And you would definitely be sick of the taste before you got there. My camera died, so now obviously the lighting is different. My bad. So yes, nutmeg can in fact get you high. But it's worth noting that, why would you? You would have to eat so much nutmeg to actually experience a high. We're talking in the ballpark of around 10 grams, which doesn't sound that much, but when it is just pure spice, dry spice, it's not great. And not one person that was asked about it said that they would do it again. So I don't think it's a worthwhile high, it's expensive and you're not gonna feel great. Can nutmeg get you high? Yes. Should you get high on nutmeg? No, no you shouldn't. So I hope you learned a thing or two today or was just a little bit interested. Don't forget to like this video, drop a comment down below if you have any follow-up questions on that. All of the links and the sources and the references will be down in the description below and while you're reading those don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a new video. Videos go up every Saturday at 6pm UK time with at least one bonus video every single month apart from this month which is Vlogtide and you'll be getting one video every day for 21 days in the lead up to Yule. See ya.